What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kirby Podcast. I'm your Tanner Kirby, alongside my friend, the Xbox expert, Keaton Kirby. <laughs> All right. All right. So what's up, Keaton? We had some technical difficulties there. What's up, buddy? Nothing much. Just glad to be back. It's been a while. Made yeah, man. We we well the thing is like with COVID times we're all just insanely busy and then like I I've started my new job and I got a new house had to move into my new house went on vacation again because it's me <laughs> have potential COVID so you know things are busy. <laughs> yeah, my job's not lighting up. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not. So I agree. I agree. Um, Maybe with that new house, so we can start getting something weekly going. Add a hey little man, in. I, Maybe I would more podcast. I would love to do that. I've got a third bedroom. And that's what I'm in right now. Actually, I've got a third bedroom that I've turned into like an entertainment center. I got like two black beanbag chairs and stuff. But I'd love to get like a table or something in here and get something like a permanent podcast set or something going in here because it's pretty empty. But like, I feel like I could do it very easily. Yeah, and we can expand the network because hell yeah. Before we really di- dive into anything, that's kind of one of the things that I was going to approach and kind of say is I, you know, I don't know how many listeners we have. I don't look at logistics. I'm sure you do. Yeah, but like if we could ever grow as big as we can get, that'd be great. But like, man, I'm just gonna throw this on here. I had to mute like 80 percent of my Twitter. <laughs> Why? And it it is because it's you know entertainment you know based. Oh yeah, and and the ironic thing is, who I am going to let's say vote for without giving too much away, yeah, and all this stuff kind of agrees, almost unanimously with almost all these people I muted. But yeah. man, is this so obnoxious! And I'm just going to sit here and say it, ironic. Yeah, how they act towards certain views, statements, ways. Mm-hmm. Take things just out of proportion, and and I like to say I'm more of a centrist. Yeah, like conservatively is my fiscal way, and I'm gonna say yeah. that to this day. Socially liberal, yeah. and I know we're just getting into politics, but this is completely yeah. related to these gaming podcasts. Yeah, sure. And like you and I used to listen to one quite a bit that was uh, one of our favorites, and they're doing this yeah. hard push, and they're posting things on there which I just completely don't agree with. Yeah, a lot of it has no backing. They're just throwing things out there, just like the media is throwing things out there, just like other people is throwing things out there. Yeah. I mean, there's some truth to some of it, but it is completely, for the most yeah. part. I think one of the phrases that kind of lit me and you both up was like, oh, he's president, obviously. President's trying to take away so and so's rights. And I'm like, where's the basis of that? <laughs> yeah. Where's anything signed into law, first of all? It's yeah. different if you're saying something because I don't care what people say. And I, like I said, I'm not voting for that man. Yeah. I don't, you know. Neither am I. And if you honestly have, I think, anything of a basic intelligence, you understand how much of politics is a show business. Yep. And half of these things he's saying is coming out of that context. Yep. But that has nothing to do with your day of life. Nope. And how it can be applied. And the way they are just extrapolating across the board. It just kills me when you look at the other person across of it, and it's literally no better to any context yep. and actually has proof of signing things worse for other groups. It's just insane to me where, like, how far gone it's become from anyone having any kind of open conversation about anything. No, we can't have that anymore. called siloed into some kind of conceptual way of thinking, and it's just got yep. to the point where, like, until this election's over, like, I just got to meet these people because – this is insane. And it goes both ways because not only is it's both sides because yep. they're sitting there and they're putting this out there, but then you still have like the 20 or 30 replies. And that, that's what creates the huge, just mass. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's just back and forth of really very uneducated people. Yep. People who are leaning very hard on media output, very hard on what their best friend output. And honestly, like, I love video games. Yeah. One of my favorite hobbies. And the media portrays it as it being this exclusive group. And if they truly believe that and are acting this way, they got something coming, dude. Because it's the biggest hobby in the world. 
Yep. I can guarantee you right now, no one's always going to be in your bubble. And no. right now, you're throwing people out of this bubble. You're bashing them. You're name calling. You're doing all these things, and it's just like, dude, is uh, but I know that's a crazy rant to begin with, but that's why I muted it. And just if we do get bigger followers, that's just all I want to say. Like, yeah, I don't care what you think, how you think, as long as you're not an ass. Exactly. You know? don't be an ass. And don't honestly, be an asshole. I, inv- I invite like open conversation because I like the yeah. whole idea of playing devil's advocate. If yeah, I don't me, understand me, something, if I've learned anything, Keaton, or you've known me long enough, I like to play devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even if when I, 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 even when I'm arguing for a side that I don't agree with, I'll play devil's advocate just to see what other know, people you, say. That you do agree with. So yeah. You're arguing a side that you agree with, but you need to play devil's advocate. And I always tell tell everybody it's a small history leg. Go look, history lesson. Excuse me. Go look up Bay of Pigs. Yeah, and it, you're you're gonna get there, and you're gonna see group think. You're gonna see what happens when you silo just thought a process. Yep. And I tell my wife all the time. She's like, "You don't even believe that. Why are you arguing it? Like, why not? First of all, yep. it helps me understand who I'm talking to even yep. more. And then if it is just let's say a far fetch out of this world, kind of whatever it is, it gives you more ammunition to put in your chamber, you know, right. For any future argument to have. But no, it's like now it's like you don't agree, you don't belong. Yep. And that, to me, just just want to throw this out here, is completely ironic. And at the end of the day, straight fascist. Not much, yeah, you? It is. Sorry, my neighbor, Jerry. No, Say good. what? Keaton is currently like, talking to his neighbor. So I will entertain you by talking nonsense. Not sure yet. We don't know what's happening with it. So, my dad hasn't even heard from the... Um, Lately, Shannon, so we don't know. I've been playing Avengers PS4 today, huh? which is pretty we great. We can get a hold of her soon because... Um, which is also bad because they've delayed all the DLC and stuff, but, you know, I still love the gameplay. I've been maining Captain America. I've got him all the way to level 50, still leveling him up gear-wise to get to that level 150, I believe, which is the end game, so I can unlock the new content, but I'm liking everything I'm seeing so far with the game. I've also been playing uh, Mafia Remastered, and Mafia Remastered, I completed that story mode. And the story mode on that was also very freaking good, and the reason I say it was very freaking good is because it's like a complete retelling of the first game, which I don't think I've ever played. I played Mafia 2, and Mafia 2 was great. I loved Mafia 2. But Mafia 1... Just has a better story, I think. <laughs> Sorry, man. I had to mute there. <laughs> no, you're good. I've just been talking about what I've been playing this month. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figured I'd, 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 I'd kill some uh, kill some time there. But yeah, I no, I totally agree. Right. If anybody, I mean, for the people who listen to this show and stuff, and we do have the, we're actually been doing good at retaining uh, viewers and stuff. I know the, the last episode went down. Uh, a little good chunk but that might be my problem there actually because i didn't there's a certain algorithm that you can play with when you're doing podcast and youtube and different things and when you when you do that you realize there's ways to basically advertise and trick the system into putting you higher when referring to different things and stuff and I didn't do that at all in the last video. So that's why the viewership was probably down more than it should have been. Yeah. But we still retained, I'd say, 80% of our viewers. So we're still in that about 100 and, views an episode, 150 episodes. I think we need to do a little bit of like rebranding too. Because don't get me wrong, yeah. we're both Kirby bros, but like, yep. You know, it's not letting, you know, too many people know. <laughs> Exactly yeah, nobody nobody really knows it's a gaming <laughs> podcast, which I agree with. So, I, I mean, we're in the gaming podcast on the uh, the uh, then, podcast app and stuff, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then if we ever get lucky enough to be able to do expansion and dive into anything and everything else that exists and the, the likes that we have, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, and that's just at the end of the day, that's all I was saying is like, when it's all said and done, man, I, I welcome anyone. Um, again, like you said, caveat, let's have no assholes here. Or, sorry if we have to bleep that out. No, it's okay. Or, I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> any people who, <laughs> anyone who do like does have, you know, prejudiced mindsets and right. acts on it and, or is, you know, like 
literally is any room for that. But just because you have an affiliation with some kind of political tie does not mean you're that way. And even if you no. support that person, and that's the other yeah. thing, like, because like, there's not, I'm, I'm just sorry, there's not enough actual enacted evidence. I'm gonna call it that, you know, in place yeah. evidence that has made anyone's life worse with these four years being ran. I understand people say that, but dude, go look at the executive orders, go look at the bills, go look at all this yeah. stuff, dude. There's, there's nothing, man. And yeah, it's a different when you sit there and you shake your head and not and have a stupid ass looking grin on your face because people are yelling in your crowd and then yeah. actually signing a bill into act. You know what I'm a saying? Lot, <laughs> a lot of it, I do believe, like, I get, like, shitting on the other side. Totally understand that. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a team, it's a team sport type thing. It's like, oh, my team's the best. I'm going to shit on the other side. But yeah. then there's also people on that other side who would love – to vote for a person on the opposing side, but they can't because every candidate that gets put up is not the best candidate. I mean, yep. I mean, if I mean, you even true. if you look at the past two elections, like on both sides, we've got the worst candidates. I mean, I mean, you're looking at me, who I mean, I'm a I'm a Republican. I mean, well, I'm not even a Republican anymore. I wouldn't consider a Donald Trump Republican would be my thing. I'm more of a conservative Mitt Romney type. Maybe libertarian. Even. Rand Paul. I think we talked about Rand him Paul so long ago. Yeah, we like, talked about Rand Paul and Norse like libertarian, hands off. Yep. You know, like yep. social, you know, socially liberal, pretty much as far as you can get, yep. but just fiscally conservative. Yep, that's the and, way and I, I agree. That, you know? I agree with that completely, and we, we're basically agree, in agreement on that. I think you might be a little more socially liberal than I am, but yeah, um, to some extent. But yeah, you'd be surprised. Extent. I think how yeah, much exactly. you get on. Exactly, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Just, I mean, the candidates that they put up, I mean, in the the primary for even this election, I'm still a registered Republican, probably should change that. But uh, the last primary I voted in, I didn't even vote for Donald Trump. I voted for Bill Weld. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, I mean, I totally get it. Like, I get both sides. You can't be mean to one side just because they don't agree. And you can't honestly say with a... a, a a real definite proof of, oh, my candidate's better or anything like that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's opinion. So, and the grand scheme of and what you agree with wrap, and don't wrap this up is one of our favorite influencers at the time. And I'm going to be honest with you since COVID hit, mm-hmm. I am very, I very li- rarely listen to podcasts now. Yeah. One reason I'm working from home. So I'm probably playing something on the TV in the background, like one of my favorite shows, you know, the office. Yeah. Parks and Rec, Rick and Morty, South Park, something kind of yeah. where I don't really have to focus too much. I'm just looking for punchlines. And so I don't have to really worry about, you know, doing podcasts too much. But, like, yep. the irony of what happened with one of our favorite, I guess you could say, people. Yeah. How he got casted out. Yep. More or less. Because of a dumb joke, but that's at all, not the reality at all. It was because yeah. of the affiliation of his political beliefs. Yeah. How he's been shaded, more or less, put in the corner, not even referred to, like, to so much capacity. And it's like, if you don't see the irony and the way you treated this person and not understand how fast his Patreon grew and how many people out there exist that are listening to you and they're like, yeah, we're not voting for Biden and you should shut up kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you, they just don't get it. Like, you're literally nope. poisoning the well with a lot of these things that you're doing. Yep. I just don't get why. They don't see that, you know, and it sucks because it's, gaming is exclusive. It should not yep. be exclusive. Nope. It should be open to anyone and everyone. And even yep. if you're a piece of shit, because, man, I'm, from my understanding, they have consoles and prisons. You yep. know what I'm saying? They like, do. It's one of them things where, like, you should not, you know, put a wall up, on no. the phrase, to any extent for anyone who should want to seek information about something. Yep. But, and, if and that's you're... just kind of... Yeah, I mean, it, even if you're a business, too, I think that's a stupid idea to force people out business-wise. That's just a dumb decision. Yeah, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it is to whatever they want to do. They exactly. Go for it. Um, but it, exactly. I'm just saying for us, you know, bring it all in. If you, yeah. We're not going to sit there, and if we ever grow a million strong, like I said, we're not going to sit there, and we're not going to host Antifa members and or Proud Boy members. It's not going to happen because those are extremists. To yeah. some extent. But, like, if you're conservative, you have your views, and a liberal has their views, go for it, man. 
Yep. I want to see the open dialogue. I want to see the open conversation. I want to, yep. you know, all that does is enlighten me. You know? and, and you're not going to, I mean, you're not going to hear that from us on the podcast unless we were to start a freaking political podcast or something. But, which we won't do because we which we won't are do. not that informed. No, we know nothing. We know nothing. <laughs> Mine's we're just the top. We're from a rural area, so we know absolutely nothing. But Don't either way, we, we have both uh, studied more or less yep. and have degrees that are related to business and the understanding of, let's say, fiscal policy. So, yes, mm-hmm. that's where, and I think that's how we are shaped towards the way we believe because we were more or less went to school for that. Right. Um, and. But that's just unrelated. But that was just a really quick spill. Sorry, that's not even because there's so much game of news, man. We got to get into. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah, so let, let's go ahead and get into it. I talked a little bit about the stuff I played uh, the past couple months, which is again Avengers. Been playing that still, leveling up my Captain America, getting excited for the new DLC, even though it got postponed. I got my. Oh, let's talk about pre-orders. You got so you did you get an Xbox key? Or I know you got a PS5 pre-ordered. And I, I got, got both. PS5 pre-ordered. So you did get both. Okay. Who did you get both. your Xbox from? X- I actually went in line at GameStop. Oh, nice. Stood nice. in line, man. Make sure. Oh, uh, old I school. Hot spotted my phone. Worked until the store opened. <laughs> got the old pre-order. <laughs> nice, nice. That's awesome, man. Are you? Are Check you excited? This out. I'm to, yeah, man. I'm just gonna throw some of this stuff out here. Like, yeah, go for it. Just my little journey on this pre-order. Yeah, they only had five Series X. Is that the in-person GameStop? Yeah, in-person that's, pre-order. That's some story. bullshit. When I got pre-ordered the Xbox One, um, or whatever it was, it didn't have a number at the end. At the end, I don't think. Yeah. The one I had to connect because day one edition. They had thirty-two at the same GameStop. Jesus, do you think? So like, do you think COVID had something to do with that, or do you think they just? Their economic numbers maybe went down like they were thinking that it wasn't going to sell that good just because of the economic situation or. I would say probably a lot to both of that. Yeah. I also think they're probably pushing more e-commerce because as you can tell, both systems, I mean, PlayStation 5 has a straight up digital system. Um, Xbox, if you get an Xbox, you don't get Game Pass. I don't know what you're doing, but that's pretty much all digital as well. Right. You're taking, you're taking away you know, store shelf frontage, um, and right. purchases. So I don't know if it's one of them things where like, Hey, let's just kind of push to get them off of shelves. I'm not really too sure. Um, but even with COVID and you actually look at the things and the factories were shut down prior, like they had articles in June and July, how they were running at 100% capacity pretty much. Right. They were it like double their volume sense. or something. Yeah. That it decreases by eight times the amount of the pre-orders you had prior to me. That just yeah. doesn't make sense. Which means, and it could be maybe because GameStop has been struggling to some yeah. extent, and maybe they don't. I heard they them. got way less digital consoles than they had uh, physical, yep. which I mean makes sense if you're a brick and mortar retail, <laughs> brick and mortar retailer. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that are saying that the reason why they created the digital edition, and it's a possibility that they really have made not even 10 percent of whatever the number unit is, just yeah. because they can advertise a price of 400. Yeah, I believe it. And that could be the case. Um, who knows? But regardless, if that is the case, I think they're also future-proofing because two to three years from now, you're probably going to see mostly digital, digital bought anyways. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I don't know. And like you said, maybe they're pacifying the brick and mortar right now with yep. the you know the disc and whatnot, and saying, "Hey, yep, that's my still guess." Be sold here, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know. It's it's just really interesting because their PlayStation, they had a little more PlayStations at the place that I was at. So when PS4 and Xbox released, it was kind of the same amount between the 30s and 40s. Yeah. And when PlayStation 5, they had eight units. So they had three more than the Series X. <laughs> That's unreal. That, that, what's what's crazy, though, is I remember the day it launched, me and you were sitting. They had the little PlayStation conference. And then yep. they just drop it. They just drop it. Like, they're like, okay, pre-orders will go live tomorrow. We'll let you know when they do. And then we go not even an hour after the conference and Walmart's already got their stuff up and then everybody's got their stuff up and then everything's sold out. Yep. Now, so this is just kind of moving off the pre-order. So we both got what we wanted. Yep. I I got a PS5, I got a physical edition and I got another controller and Miles Morales. Nice. I actually pre-ordered Godfall at GameStop. Nice. But I'm pretty sure 
I'm switching that to Miles Morales because I haven't heard anything good from Godfall. You know, and, I, I've seen gameplay for it, and it just looks so generic. Yeah, and I think the Spider-Man is going to be... I think the Miles Morales part is going to be pretty standard, like, awesome. Mm-hmm. I think it will be short. Uh, five to ten hours is what I'm expecting. But I was thinking in my head, like, you know, it's the Ultimate Edition. I never played the DLC for the original Spider-Man. And supposedly yeah. it's running at, what, 4K60 now? With yeah. ray tracing? So I'm like, that's worth 70 bucks, right? <laughs> Have they said, have they claimed that uh, the saves will transfer? Didn't they say they wouldn't? They wouldn't. Uh, I'm fine with that, man. Yeah, I think you could still, I I think you could still play the DLC without completing the game, though, I think. And with that being said, I think I told you, I actually got Spider-Man from someone who worked at Sony at the time. Right. (laughs) So, I never really purchased it, so. Exactly. To purchase it, you know, coming out for the PS5. But right. the game I do have pre-ordered right now for sure is Demon Souls. Pretty stoked nice. for that one. Because that's nice, really the only nice. two games I'm getting at launch is uh, right. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm getting it on Xbox. Right. Demon Souls and Black Ops. Um, yeah, I'll get Black Ops. Play. Yeah, and I'm really just excited for the zombies on that one. I just played the beta. Me too. Did I you see they're doing the... they're doing Warzone zombies now? Yeah, well, that's for Modern Warfare. I'm really curious how they're going to integrate everything together with that Warzone. Because um, I'm not a big fan, honestly, of the multiplayer of Black Ops and that beta that came out. Yeah. There were some things that I never played on it. it. I, I, I had the alpha, and apparently it went out. It decided it wanted to go out at, like, right <laughs> when right when I wanted to play. So Yeah, So, but the zombies, though, in the hopefully campaign, so that's worth a purchase. And I'll Mm-hmm. I think for Xbox and I think PlayStation 2, it's supposed to be 4K 120, I believe, which is nice. some extent of next gen gaming, you know, like, yeah, that's why we're hopefully getting these consoles. And um, so those are the three games I'm getting pretty much at launch. But the next week I'm getting Cyberpunk, though. So <laughs> nice. So, yeah, it, is, is Cyberpunk a launch game? Or it is, is not it next gen. Nope. It's coming out okay. on both um, the both next year and the new console. Or the next week. So it comes out November 19th, I believe, or 17th. And it's gotcha. releasing on both consoles. Both console generations, I guess you'd say. PS4 and Xbox and Xbox Series and PS5. Yeah. And that gotcha. game looks See, dope. It does. I'm still I'll, I'm still debating on whether to get it. I don't know. I, it, it looks good and everything. And I'm just... I just got to figure out what I'm getting <laughs> out long. Because yeah. oh, I, I, I was, spent so much money already on New house and sh- <laughs> shenanigans. And I actually bought a new TV too for the next the next consoles. Nice, so you get that 8K. I did get an 8K, but I got the uh, Sony 900H, I think, because nice. it actually has the 2.1 HDMI in there, which nice. is the only native port that runs 124K. So <laughs> I was like, if I'm buying new consoles, I might as well have a TV that actually runs the consoles. <laughs> exactly man i i mean i've got mine it does 4k so hopefully it'll be good i don't know yeah, if it's I mean, 120 or anything but it'll do its job but um i'm excited for it regardless it, it is a weird console launch because it's not like how do you say it you like end of the world i guess you can say like oh my gosh this is gonna be so great kind of thing yeah it it, is kind of like a it's those it's one of those weird launches where i mean you don't really have to get it for the exclusives like i'm upgrading my iphone kind of feeling yeah (laughs) yeah it it honestly reminded me of the ps4 pro or something like where you're just like okay yeah if they didn't call this the ps5 would i have gotten it (laughs) yeah yeah but i'm still excited um you really and the I guess games coming out around it. It's gonna be pretty pretty dope. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the pre-order situation. I know you're talking about games you played. I think you mentioned Mafia. I've been playing it as well. Yes, I played Mafia Remastered. The story in that game is great. Yeah, I'm halfway. Okay, I just did a mission. It was like raining at night at a farm. Have you got that? Okay. Part? Yes, I beat the game. So. How how close am I to beating the game? <laughs> Because I've done, like, two missions after that. Okay, so you've done two missions after that. Um, You're 
pretty close, I think, to beating it. You don't have it that much longer. I'd say you're probably 75%. Yeah, and my takeaway, and you can, you know, you said a lot more on this before. Yeah. As I was having a conversation with the neighbor is, that was it Deck 13 or Hangar 13, the studio? Yeah. yeah. They are so close to having something super special. Yep. I agree. It's just like they're slightly missing a little something. And a lot of that, I think, is kind of like the way the game plays. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes the driving super stiff. Sometimes the animations and the way of like getting on and off cover and even aiming is kind of like yeah, almost like it's fighting you. And there's a lot of, like, people, like, you'll be fighting people and they'll just be looking, like, they'll never even know you're there and then you just can shoot them in the head and they won't notice. (laughs) So, like, but, yeah, right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's so close to being, because, like, the reason why I bought the game was, like, dude, this is like a GTA set in the 40s based off of Chicago and the alcohol. Yep. Yep. Did you ever play any of the Mafia games, though, before? I have not. See, actually, you, you need to. See, I played them. I didn't play the first game. This That's where I got this, because I played Mafia 2. I played part of 3. I never finished it. I'm going to go back and finish it now, definitely. But uh, I played 2, and I loved 2 when I was in middle school and stuff. And there's story elements in 2 that show up in 1, or tie oh, back nice. to 1. Yeah, so... When you play one, you'll know. Like I notice a lot more of stuff referenced in one, and even three now in this remaster. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I loved it. The characters, the writing, everything's awesome. And if you go back and you watch like what the original Mafia and everything looked like, it like this is this is an awesome remake. Honestly, oh, yeah, it's like one sure. of the best. And the, the things I was kind of like I'll say tripped up on was I didn't realize it was a linear story. Mm-hmm. I actually thought it was kind of open world, kind of like yeah. you've grown accustomed to. But then I yep. realized, like, the game came out originally in, like, 2001, I think, yep. or 2002, before they really had, like, this open world formula down with, like, tons of side quests and all this bull crap. So, yep. like, Mafia 3, from my understanding, is a lot like that. So I'm yes, actually excited to play Mafia 3. Mafia 2 as well. Mafia 2 and Mafia 3 both had money systems. So, like, you actually... Like, if you get pulled over by the cops, there's actually something going there. Like, and the cops are a lot more aggressive and stuff. But, like, this game, cops aren't as aggressive. You can legit oh, yeah. pull over and pay a fine with invisible money that doesn't exist. <laughs> I haven't even seen that yet. <laughs> yeah, it, like, so, like, it legit does, like, money does not matter in that world. But, like, in the other games, money matters a lot. Gotcha. So, yeah, like, I'm excited to play my future because I think after I beat this one, I'm going to boot it up. I would, man. And Ma- Mafia 2, too, because Mafia 2 ties a lot more into Mafia 1 yeah. than Mafia 3 does. But. Well, see, I don't have two, and I heard the, like, not the remake, but Re- the, whatever they did. Remaster, yeah. Wasn't it as wasn't good. wasn't really on scale to what they did with the first no. one. So no, I'm hoping maybe they are doing that to the second one. Dude, I would love time. that so much, because two was, 2 was awesome. Yeah, so maybe I'll just see if they actually end up doing it. Or hopefully they're working on a new one. Like I said, man. They seem like they're right there, dude. <laughs> Mafia know, three, just... Mafia three sold really well, if I remember right. So I, I'm yeah. hoping that is the case, though. So. And I feel like this is one of them jobs where they're working on their engine. They're like, "Hey guys, let's just put a little something out to pass over for a couple more years mm-hmm. until we release the next Mafia, and hopefully that next Mafia will be, you know, the next gen that we're all waiting for." Because, right. I'm just gonna say this: I don't think GTA six or seven or whatever number we're on now. Yep, six. I'm pretty sure it's probably four to five years off. Yeah, so, I wouldn't like, be surprised. I know there's a new Saints Row coming, which is supposed to be a little more grounded. Mm-hmm. But, like, there's a little opportunity there to jump in and get that crowd for a short period of time. So, yep. I can see you coming. But um, I'll switch a little bit gears real quick. I think we both bought Star Wars Squadron. I did not. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I need to. I, I got VR for that reason. <laughs> Well, the only thing I can say on it is I've only played the uh, two intro missions. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Are they good, though? Yeah. Is it fun? Um, after I changed my controls, I've been having a little more, I guess, fun and or yeah. opportunity with it. Well, do you even um, like flight games, though, is the thing? Oh, I love flight games. I beat pretty much oh, every okay. combat, which I think is one of the better simulation slash arcade right. games out there. Right, right, right. And it doesn't play as good as combat. I can say that right now. Um. I just think the Ace Combat, though, is 
how do you say this? Like the being able to fly top tier. in third, not top tier, but flying in third person makes a difference. Because oh, okay, the squadrons not have third person. It does not at all, and they're doing oh. it because of the VR aspect. But I that's think probably added, the case. They added third person; it'd be a little easier to get into. Yeah. Um, because I'm gonna be honest with you, when you're in space, this is actually kind of cool. This is the little things I like about it. First of all, you can stop and turn on a dime. Yeah. To some extent, which is really cool because you are in space and technically you wouldn't have any forces acting on your vehicle, so you could do that without yeah. stalling out, for instance. Which you would do in like Ace Combat, for instance, because again, we live in a world governed by physics. Yeah. So that's pretty dope. Second thing is, you can get lost in the game and you don't know if you're flying upside down. Oh, damn. <laughs> or upside right. Because if you're just yeah. seeing stars and it's nothing but black screen, yeah, you don't have you don't, any orientation. Yeah, you have no idea where you're at. Yeah. And that's still pretty dope because like, you'd want that to be a thing because in real life, that's what it would be if you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You don't know so up and down. <laughs> Exactly. So it is pretty cool when you get on that, but at the same time, it makes it kind of hard. Like, if you're in that position, and all of a sudden, the asteroid's right in front of your face, like, okay, I need to duck below it, but yeah. you don't hit the right input. But it's still kind of cool, though. Yeah. But um, hopefully, I'm going to try to get more into that, dive into the story a little bit. Nice. How is From the story? Read, is the story good? I can't tell you, and I don't want to see anything on it, because I've heard yeah. some people hate it. I heard some people love it. So yeah, that's what I, I beat it. You know, I want to Wyatt, who was on the show, he has it. He was telling me a little about it. He did. He wasn't yeah. a big fan of it, I don't think. But he's more into like legends and EU, and you know, we'll be talking about like different lightsaber fights and stuff. And he'll be <laughs> like, "Oh, he used this defensive number two, and <laughs> that made him that's the best." <laughs> so well, like. He's more into it than me, so I don't know how well his critiques really hold up to the average player. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I and like I said, that's why I don't want to see anything on it because yeah, I haven't digested it enough. Um, that's really it for the new games. Um, and before we dive into the other crazy story news that we're going to, have to wrap off the top of your head, I just want to say this right here though. Yeah, go. So I started Resident Evil Seven last night on my Xbox One X. Resident Evil it. 7 is the biohazard? Correct. Oh, I have that on VR as well. <laughs> yep, right. Well, so I did this because it's Halloween. Yeah, 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 spooky. And I was trying to play a game called Evil Within 2, and for some reason I just really couldn't Could get, get into, into it too it. much. Yeah. And I beat Resident Evil 7 years ago, and yeah. I got it on the original PlayStation. Right. The original PlayStation did not have HDR. Right. <laughs> and I was not using the audio headset that went over my head. Dude, right. playing this game, and I'm sure the VR is even extrapolated to even more. Oh, it's freaking I had nuts never, and scary as shit. Yeah, like, the context of that, I've never felt that way before. Like, I was legit, man. Like, having the M3, because I have 3D audio headset, yeah. and it has true blacks on this TV I'm playing on. Yep. So, like, you don't see shit unless you sound the flashlight over there. I was like, dude, this is dope. <laughs> And yeah, I could really play the VR the one. one coming out to be honest with you because just playing it now, and I've already beat the game, but I'm just playing it again through that on the Xbox. Yeah, and now I got these couple other future things, and I'm like, people, I guess some people just don't understand the difference between even just the HDR implementation, just right. major difference, man. And the game holds up, dude. It's a looker still, like, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I believe it, man. And like, I tried to play it in VR. I'm just a two. I'm a baby, so I, I couldn't do it. But <laughs> I tried my hardest, and I just get way too scared. There's actually a demo for the game that you can play in VR as well, and the it kitchen, like right? has like a yeah, 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 yeah. And it has like a little girl, like the little scary girl, come up behind yep. you and like put her hands over your eyes and stuff. Oh my god, <laughs> I about poop yep. my pants. It's pretty dope. That's all I want to say. Like. I don't know if I'll beat it or see, you know, stick it Did through. Did you ever play um, one of the scary – the only scary game that I really like – well, obviously, I like Slender Man and stuff like that. But, like, <laughs> just – I don't know. I like the strategy of Slender Man. They're like, they're, the community they're staying away. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, Outlast. Did you ever play any of the Outlast games? I played a very little bit. Of, that's the one where you go into the hospital, right? Like yeah, so that, the, the first one, yes. The first one is like that. The, the second one is more like a country, like – 
rural south clansman type scarier. <laughs> what happens when you just out of curiosity because I had it on my mm-hmm. Xbox. Does it does it get to the point where you actually like are having altercations with enemies, or is it a constantly no. trying to solve puzzles and escape? Yeah, it's constantly like you're trying to. It's kind of like amnesia, but I, I think amnesia might have had <laughs> weapons too. I don't know. I never got into amnesia that much. I know you have like a lantern, but no, you have like a flashlight. And you, like, have to hide from enemies. Like, you'll run, hide in a locker. And then, like, you're just trying to stay away. Like, it's basically like a stealth game, but, like, with scary people. So you don't ever have to get to fight anybody or anything like that. There's a few different things with puzzles. Like, you activate a generator, and then you have to get to the exit before the generator turns back off. Or you'll you'll run out of, like, batteries, and then you have to do stuff in, like, the complete darkness. And then... There'll be ones where the enemies chase you for a really long time and I think stuff like kind of like I don't know if I like those horror games as much because I love the struggle for power in Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the very beginning, you know, your mag's running out, right? Yeah. You got two shots left and you just hope one of them hits and it kills them. Well, by the end of the game, dude, you're just like flamethrower just burn them to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I kind of like that progression, but. Yeah, I had, I, I had to try it out because I think the Xbox is getting a game called The Medium, which mm-hmm. is, I think, a lot like Outlast. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get it because I think it comes out in December and it's supposed to be amplified by next gen. So we'll see you know, how it changed my mind on those kinds. <laughs> exactly. And hey, man, more, more power to you because I cannot do it. <laughs> <laughs> more freaking power to you. All right. Well, let's ramble off some of the crazy big stories that. Everyone's All right. talked about, and we're well, super we know. late on. Yeah, we're super late on. All right, Bethesda and Microsoft, opinions by Keaton. Go. <laughs> First of all, it's insane. Yes. Um, I, I, there's a lot of people talking about if and when they'll be on PlayStation. It's not going to be on PlayStation. You don't Phil think so? No, nah, he had an interview like last week. Yeah, but there was much, still a maybe in there. He, yeah, but he just mentioned his the ecosystem that Xbox is catering to, which includes yeah. PC, is more than well enough to reach anyone and everyone. Yeah, so he's right. And the way I see it is, why do you buy a seven billion, seven point five billion dollar acquisition? Yep. And then turn around and be like, ah, oh, we'll still publish and release on there. Yeah, I forget <laughs> who it was. Someone I I heard in games media was talking about it, and he said like, if if it was any other company had bought it, like if a Nintendo or a Sony had bought yep, Bethesda, they wouldn't question the nobody would question anything. Yep. So, I agree. Yep, I and agree I really, with that too. And I really think Microsoft's going to be like, look guys, Starfield or Scroll 6, you got to come to the Xbox ecosystem. Yep. And like, here's the kicker on it. Like, that doesn't mean go buy an Xbox. No. And that, that's what I think Phil Spencer was trying to get out. Dude, you can, I'm not me and you right now, because I yeah. think we both have iPhones. But if you have an Android phone, guess what, man? You just download it on your Android phone because it's going to be on Game Pass. Exactly. So you can still have your PlayStation, but yet you're and streaming stream it. it. Yep. I'm just stream it there from X Cloud. Like, so yeah, you don't have to sit there and buy this new console. And I'm sure the nope. new consoles will run it better because it's going to be downloaded to your console, etc. Oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about latency and streaming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like... They don't have to put it on PlayStation. Everybody's like, oh, they're going to put it on PlayStation. You don't see that happening. No, I don't either. And yes, it's I did be- originally when I was first thinking about it. I was like, yeah, why wouldn't they? I mean, these these games have been on those consoles for years. Yep. It would kind of be shitty yep. of them to do that. But now I'm just like, no, I, I yeah. want Microsoft to be aggressive. And you're like talking that. about people saying Microsoft don't have games that you know move systems. So they do now. <laughs> exactly. Last of Us Two is one of the best selling, and it's still barely yep. sold over two. 10 million. Yep. I actually don't think it's past 2 million yet. Spider Man has, but it's also a property, but it's only around 11 to 12. Yep. Skyrim is like over 25 million. Yep. You know? Now, yeah, the game's been released on refrigerators, but still. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's going to move consoles. I agree. People are going to buy consoles for the next Skyrim or Elder yep. Scrolls and or the next Fallout. And I, I just think it's dumb when people are like, oh, they're going to put it on here. Don't worry about it. Like, no. Nah. Microsoft is. 7.5, dude. And now I can maybe see some other titles, like Tango Works or whatever it's called, and yeah. the one behind Dishonored and the Tokyo Yeah, Ghost I mean, Wire. what's funny is, like, the first maybe even two like, titles they get to release are play- PlayStation exclusives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's the irony, though, right? Yeah. So, 
per each one of them exclusive titles now sold on PlayStation. Yep. <laughs> Microsoft's getting the majority of the money. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious, but it's all good. Um, and on top of that, all that exclusive deals that Microsoft at PlayStation spent on them studios, Microsoft now absorbed all that money. <laughs> I'm yep. Just, it's insane that they can sit there and do a 7.5 cash billion. It's insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to move the needle. I think some of the games are a little further along than you think. Like, I think Starfield was in the next two to three years. Um, personally, most people said that game should be out now because it's been forever since Fallout 4. Yeah. But it's their new IP. They're going into space. You know, obviously, there's room, like, articles came out this week about having a new animation system. So it sounds like it's going to be a little more, I guess, modern or up to gen, you know, because Fallout right. 4 did come out and left you. It left you hanging a little bit, like wanting a little more. So I'm assuming, but I, see, I think that game's a lot closer um, than we think. So, and like if you're, seven, you're you know, you're getting ready to spend $7.5 billion, you're going to hope that you're going to get some more returns. I think Wolfenstein right. 3 may be a little bit closer than you think. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm wondering like if they'll take over like any um, Xbox like titles that haven't been seen yet. But here's, like, the kicker with it, though. Because I was sitting there reading some stuff on it, and In Exile was just released Wasteland 3. Yeah. They already have two RPGs in the fold, and one of them, because they've, like, massively expanded their studio. Yeah. And I think they have, like, two locations. Aren't have those all kinds the former of... Fallout guys, too? Yes. Yeah, so and couldn't think... they make, like, a top-down Fallout now, like a retro one? If they wanted to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they are going to make it top-down to some extent. I think that's yeah. one of their projects. And then their other project, I do think they're going to release more of a modern action um, RPG approach because, if I'm not mistaken, they hired one of the leads in God of War's um, combat design. Oh. So that tells me that they're going to do something more third-person oriented. Yeah, more action that's what it sounds like to me, too. Um, it, it's just weird because it's like you're getting this thing where, don't get me wrong, I'm so glad Microsoft has made these moves. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, are they about to saturate like this Western action RPG market? Because you got like the Outer Worlds, yeah, and whatever Obsidian's doing, which is Avowed, which looks sick. Uh, but yes, want... it looks very Skyrim-like. You know what I'm it saying? It does. It does. <laughs> and are you gonna have Elder Six, you know, Skyrim as well? You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of weird because I most want Obsidian like... to make Fallout New Vegas too now, though. Now that would be pretty dope. Um, and I could see something more like that from Obsidian, definitely if Elder Scrolls. Like, if you're throwing out a timeline two years from now, mm -hmm. let's just say Obsidian using kind of the Outer Worlds engine up res, like, hey, we're going to make a Fallout New Vegas 2. We can now. We're all playing, right? We're all partners again. Right. Literally. You know? <laughs> so, because that would be a big kind of, hey, everybody, we're doing this kind of thing. Four right. years out, let's say you drop Skyrim. And then Obsidian also drops a Valve somewhere between that time. Um like, I mean, they can have a constant steady drip, steady drip of just banger after banger. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And Microsoft's really never been in that position. And it's really, really interesting, I guess, when you sit there and you keep poking the bear that has the majority of the honey. Eventually, mm -hmm. he's going to defend his honey and or use his honey. <laughs> oh, boss. <laughs> you know? So, like, I don't know, man. It's, it's pretty exciting. And, like... I love all my PlayStation. I love all my, even with Microsoft getting Bethesda and all of that. What is it? Not Zen, is it Zenimax? All of their studios. Like, I still think Naughty Dog has probably the best, and or either one or two with maybe Rockstar as the best yeah. studio on earth. I agree. Um, and like, yeah, I had some serious beef with Last of Us Two. Yeah, that story. It's so funny because I've been reading some of your articles now coming up with about the hate and the exact same thing that I was saying about that. And it kind of makes me feel good because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, see, I had some truth to that, you know? Sure People, you did. But um, so I've been watching, I guess you can say, or reading that, but I still think they're probably number one, right? Number two, yeah. maybe Rockstar. And number yeah, I was three, about to say on, Rockstar. I think it's another three. Sony, which is uh, Santa Monica. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, I could do that. I still think, uh, that studio. I'm trying to think of ones who made Spider Man. Yeah, it starts with an I. Who, Insomniac? I think Insomniac's up there. 
I see, man, and Sonya still has a little to prove for me. Because, like, I hate to say it, like, I love Spider-Man. But it wasn't world-changing. <laughs> Same thing no. with Ratchet and Clank. Like, to me, they're a... They're man, solid, though. Triple A, B kind of studio. If, but, I, I think if you put that studio... Now, this is pre-Bethesda in Microsoft. They would be Microsoft's Naughty Dog. <laughs> Maybe, but see, like, to me, like, Elder Scrolls Skyrim is more impressive than both um, Spider-Man and the latest Ratchet and Clank. I know some people are like, oh, that's not true. And I'm talking about the full capacity of everything that's in that game. And the yeah. insanity from Quest, the insanity, the builds that you can do. Like, to me, they have uh, have shown more, you get more out of that game than you do with Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, and, and just a game standpoint. So, like, that's why I don't put Insomnia. Like, that's what I'm trying to do is, like, make this list of these developers that I think are, like, top-notch. Like, Insomniac's top ten for sure. Um, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, the first three studios I can think of off the top of my head, none of them are still owned by Microsoft. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they still need to get in there and hopefully fund even more money and really push forward and, you know, start getting in here. Because even the initiative, like, their quadruple A studio – like, supposedly, they've been, like, poaching people left and right to make their game, <laughs> which right. now is rumored to be a third-person Perfect Dark, which I'm not really too fond of. Like, Yeah, you know, you know I've never played any of the Perfect Dark games. Me neither. And to me, it's just like, if you're going to spend this kind of cash and or capital, like, why wouldn't you just... Make you know, a Banjo-Kazooie game? I know, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> 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 but, uh... Yeah, I'm still excited for it. Um, I still think they have some work to do. And I think yeah. like even those studios, because you got to admit, man, what is Bethesda's record right now for game releases? Not Other good, than Doom right Eternal, now. which you know reviewed really well. Yeah, and Wolfenstein. Game, I don't think it sold. I mean, it sold well, but not as good as I'm assuming they wanted. Same thing with Wolfenstein. Yep. You have Dishonored 1 and 2, which were great games, but just didn't sell too well. You had Evil Within 1 and 2, pretty good games, still didn't sell as well as they probably wanted to. And then you have like Fallout 76, which is a straight as of right now laid an egg. You know, I'm like, so yeah, you acquired this huge studio because of a promise that you're hoping these titles deliver. But they right. still got to deliver. That's all, I'm gonna, that's all I got to say. And like, they got to be able to make it, man. Elder Scrolls 6 better be like defining RPG for Westerns going forward, like Western RPGs, you know? Mm-hmm. And we're just gonna see. I mean, yeah, it's great that they got them, but there's still a lot to come from it. Um, that's pretty much it on them, because like, who knows what's really gonna happen? They might end up putting on PlayStation. They may not. I think it's still years away until we truly see see the fruition from all these studio acquisitions. Right. You know, um, w- one thing that makes me happy though is that games. There's still stuff to look forward to. Movies. It's just so sad. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just so depressing like i, I hate it because like every day it's like new new thing gets delayed that i want to see freaking james bond's got more time to die yep. than anyone else i know so and the movies is really weird because no there's no point making any new ones there's no point the biggest yeah you've the got biggest all studio. these movies on the back burner there is mm-hmm. no point in making more movies well because, you know, Regal had an announcement where they closing quite a bit. AMC closed quite a bit. Well, and they're not closing the studio. I mean, they're not closing the theaters yet. They're just closing them because there's no reason to keep them open because there's no movies to come out. Right. That's what I'm saying. But how long can you do that without hemorrhaging, yeah. hemorrhaging or hedging? You know, like, yep. it's a matter of time before. Because, like, our local theater in Hickory finally reopened. But they have two yep. shows per movie per day. <laughs> you know, yep. like, you've really got to plan ahead. Yep. Um, and I still want Disney. to go see um, Tenet, Tenet, by the way. Heck yeah, dude. Me too. We should plan on that. Let's do it My this weekend, maybe. is out of town next weekend. Next this Saturday. weekend or next weekend? No, next Saturday. So not this Saturday, but the next. Yeah, so I say we go do it then. That's good with me. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to plan on that. But uh, Okay. Yeah. Um, going back to the movies. Disney, though, came out and said they're pretty much switching over to streaming. Right, like they're going to put their focus, which is crazy when they've had the most money made by Blockbuster after Blockbuster with Marvel, to yep. Star Wars. 
Yep. So, like, maybe they see or are seeing it kind of like the future proof of, you know, maybe theaters are not the way to go, you know, yep. in the near future in these blockbusters, which can be depressing because, you know, at the same time, like, when you see these movies released on Netflix, mm-hmm. even with big stars, you're still, like, you know, not straight to DVD, but you're like, oh, it's straight to stream. How good really is it? <laughs> exactly. Like, like, people don't put that much money. They're not going to put that much mo- money into it as they would a movie. Because there's less chance for it to make it back. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's interesting. So, like you said, at least video games is a little more future-proof. Exactly. <laughs> and it, oh. it, they're more future-proof because you have games that still have released years ago that are alive today. Oh, yeah. Bringing in money, updating, like... Freaking GTA I mean, Five, top of the charts every month. Left 4 Dead 2, the Valve community from the support of mm-hmm. Valve released a huge like update, you know, years after that game has been, you know, Valve has at least touched on it. So like, right, it's a different kind of media, different medium altogether, you know, and right, it is pretty exciting because like even like looking forward, which I kind of wish movies would do, to be honest with you. Yeah. And they were getting into it with like MCU giving this full timeline. DC kind of did the same. Um, the Monster Universe, which I guess is not happening because the mummy flunked. <laughs> like, I love the Dracula. Monster Universe. So, like, even like even Godzilla, which they kind of did pretty well, but like yeah. they were like, "Hey, this is coming, this is coming." Because like video games, we know Elder Scroll Six is coming, but right. we may not get that game till 2025. You know what right. I'm saying? But we still know it's coming. But for movies, there's not too much of that out there. You know, we might get, uh, you know, MCU Phase 4 timeline, but it's right. still kind of moving, you know? But... Yeah. All right, man. Did we miss any? I mean, I know we just hit that one. Is there any other crazy big stories? I mean, we don't really have to talk about the, I guess, the PS5 guts, right? Or how big it is. <laughs> or the heat right. of the consoles, which are all blown out of proportion. Well, it's got that um, liquid cooling. <laughs> I'm trying to think of just you know other things other than some people say the launch lineups are kind of weak, but you know I mean like, they're you know, always weak. Yeah, and in my opinion, they're always freaking weak. So oh, I got one real quick. Yeah, go for it. We talked about this on the PS5 that video we watched too long ago because I said, hey man, we're going to see some God of you know God of War the next one. Yeah, I think it's a lot closer than you think, man. There's some listings now showing February. For God of War? Yeah, Ragnarok. Damn. And then Corey Barlog supposedly I'd be down tweeted with that. on it, and he didn't even shoot it down. He just tweeted about it. So I'm like, Sounds like Corey Barlog to me. You know, like, what's going on here? And I say, how about this? Since we're kind of running out of time anyways. Yeah. Not running out of time, but we don't want to go too long. But to wrap it up, mm-hmm. I say just real quick, predictions for the Video Game Awards. Because I think it's going to be a banger this year because of both consoles just releasing. And I think they're going to try to stack it in 2021 to say this is what's coming. Okay. Um, so when is that? December? Yep, December. So consoles are out. I think first or second week in December. So that being said, we're going to get – we're going to get – uh, shoot. We'll get trailers for the next Star Wars game. I don't know. Okay, that's a what out Star there. Wars. I don't know what hmm. Star Wars. So I assume like it. Fallen Order Two kind of thing, or you? What do you? I'm like, thinking. I, mean, I assume that's the next in line for it. But it could what be something What if I told different. you that Star Wars EA struck a deal with Game Pass? So what if they're more buddy and buddy and and now they have someone like Obsidian working on the next uh, Old Republic. Kotor, that would be awesome. Yeah. I would like a Kotor, <laughs> but that that's well, that, that's my prediction. I think because I remember when I was little, the the Game Awards. I remember watching live on Spike TV when it used to do that with Geoff oh, yeah. Keighley. And, Samuel uh, Jackson walk on stage. <laughs> no, no, it had Yoda. I think it was uh, Force Unleashed two, I believe, and that I was, was also. Slightly yeah, appearances yeah. that happened then. <laughs> oh yeah, the freaking weird ones. And then there was like a, uh, there was a, another one I remembered. It was um, uh, who was it? 
So I remember Star Wars. Oh, Batman Arkham City. I remember when that was there too. So I think we'll, we'll get we'll we'll get something related. I think probably like an Avengers DLC trailer or something stupid, and then you know more Fortnite shit updates. And okay. Yeah. I don't think anything really big. Maybe a Perfect Dark thing or like gameplay trailer for Fable or something. But nothing. See, nothing, I'm in the. Nothing the too big. I the opposite mindset. <laughs> I keep I my standards really low for Game Awards because I'm always way too hype, and then it, uh, I end up getting funky calm. <laughs> yeah, you're right, but I'm just thinking because of the way it's lining up this year and without a proper E3, I think we're going to see some heavy hitters this year. And like, and like, But in the same vein that you're talking about, like, for instance, Halo at this point will have not been shown since July. Ah, so good I point. I forgot about Halo's see, existence. Another Halo demo um, yeah. with a 2021 launch window. Not date, because I think it okay. would be really... You know I what believe I'm saying? that. Like, so I can definitely see a little more in-depth, maybe even a live multiplayer look kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see... You kind of alluded to this to some extent, but I think you'll see God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, or whatever they're going to call it. I think you'll actually see a trailer with a proper name titling. Because everybody's calling it Ragnarok or whatever, but yeah, all it said was Ragnarok is coming with a God of War image, <laughs> so we don't yeah. really know the title. So I can definitely see them dropping a trailer, and definitely if it's a 2021 release, which a lot of people are alluding to, because yeah. I mean the trailer said next year, regardless, but no date or no window. So I can see them saying at the Game Awards, like even if it's a minute trailer and all you see is a slightly more teenage Atreus, you know, right. and you know it cuts title card actual name launch window um so like and to me those are kind of bigger than normal um i think nintendo's been weirdly quiet and i kind of agree nintendo more maybe dropping tall. a trailer more funky yeah. tall well i was thinking more along the lines of the next switch like the hd pro switch or whatever they're gonna call it uh-huh. like i can see them maybe doing another Breath of the Wild. They're so trailer. weird. They're so weird with their freaking things. Like now they're doing like directs and they're like right before the game comes out. So like I have <laughs> no idea. Yeah, you're true. That's true. Um, I I don't know what it would be Nintendo. I was just throwing that out there. Yeah. Um, so like I said, God of War, Halo. I think those two are going to be a scene. I think. Cause see, like at this point now, I am kind of curious. Like I don't really see anything from Bethesda, regardless. You know, like. The DLC stuff, yeah, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. Like, any game that's out now, uh, like you said, Avengers, they'll probably have a drop for something. Um, Cyberpunk might even have a drop for you know, their next expansion already. Um, right. Or, you know, something shown. Um, Assassin's Creed, you know, they release details on their whole DLC. So you can see some kind of montage video of, like, 10 million people have played Assassin's Creed Valhalla and... 37.9 billion heads have been decapitated. <laughs> like, here we are, looking forward to the invading Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly, yeah, that's what the DLC is. So right. You see, like, all that kind of stuff. Um, and really, outside of Halo and God of War, because both of those, I think, are pretty feasible based on yeah. the information we've already gathered. And then, like, on the Xbox side, like I said, I still don't see anything from Bethesda. Uh, of course, Game Pass updates. I guarantee you that'll be in Game Awards. Oh, I'll probably yeah. be like, hey, Elder Scrolls Remake, we're dropping it here. And I think there'll be Pass. like some indie game yeah, or like, something that gets shown and it's like, oh, and it's live on now, Game Pass today or something stupid. That would be dope. If Tunic finally came out, <laughs> that was easy. I don't know if you know what Tunic is. I don't. It's kind of like an old school, like high definition graphics, little Fox Link dude. Oh, that's straight cool. up, straight up, Legend of Zelda, and it looks phenomenal. So that would be dope. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's kind of it. I'm trying to think of all of those other things, and oh, like well, we're just in the same vein of Sony, same vein of what I was saying with God of War. It, same mm-hmm. thing applies to like Ratchet and Clank, like an actual another trailer with release date. Like hey, PS5 owners, you know we've already sold eight million. Here's what to look forward to: next Ratchet and Clank March release date. Let's get it. You know, like, yeah, I can see that one being a play. Um, that's the thing about Sony is it seems like they have more in the pipeline. So, because if God of War's 2021, Ratchet and Clank's 2021, and supposedly the next uh, 
horizon for Ben West is either 2021 or 2022. That's some major AAA titles coming out in mm-hmm. just a year after a launch. Yep, I so, believe it. Um, hopefully, this is the one prediction. We'll just say I'll leave it here because I, I just want to hear something about it. But hopefully, we get some news on Elden Ring. Yeah. We've all been waiting on that. That's your prediction that, for that everything. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man, but... It's it what you want like to see, just, I understand. It's insane because normally from software, the way they have gone, they've already shown more information plus release date. But this one's just like super quiet. So it may be their most ambitious title yet. So, you know, that'd be pretty dope. And maybe they were working with uh, Sony on creating um, Demon Souls as well. I don't really know because I know it was, who was that? Blue Point and Sony Japan Studios. Mm-hmm. So, because I think Bloodborne, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sony helped with Bloodborne. It wasn't just the from from software that created that game. Right. So they could be possibly helping with Demon Souls, you know, since it was their original, you know, torture baby. <laughs> <laughs> but man, that's kind of it, dude. Like, I know we've missed out a lot because it's been forever, and there's been thousands of stuff coming out about gaming and exactly. in reality. We're just three weeks away from getting the new consoles. <laughs> yep. Oh, one more. I just got it, and I'm actually really excited for this. This is what I came to my Go head. For it. Battlefield Five. Is that coming it's, out? They came out and said it's going to be a not V, but they came out and said like five is supposed to be modern. And I think they've already said 4K 60 frames native. Dang. So I'm hoping that game looks dope as it sounds. <laughs> and I think Dice <laughs> needed a little extra time to touch up on because they were pushing out a lot of stuff with Battlefront and Battlefield. Right. Like, literally year after year. So they took that break. So I'm really hoping that, because uh, I think we all love our annual Call of Duties, but it is nice when you have another shooter that can <laughs> jump in there. And man, every time I say this stuff, I lead into more stuff because <laughs> Rainbow Six Quarantine, we haven't even talked yeah. about that. So I feel like that coming. game's going to get delayed. Well, it's not coming this year, but we need to hear some more about that. Far Cry 6, but see, UB heads or UB Fords or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming they would save more of that stuff for that, anyways. And then you and I are both wanting a new SOCOM. <laughs> so, yep. Who knows if that's really a thing or not. Probably that'll not. That'll never be shown. But who knows, man. It's interesting. It's a crappy time to be alive to some extent, but a great time at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will end it there, Keaton. <laughs> that's perfect. That's a great ending live. But we uh, we thank you for listening to the podcast. We'll keep up with everything, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>